think we're working on adding her now, so she should be here. What's oh, up? There you are. Hello. Hi. Can you guys hear me okay? I don't know what happened. I was on a second ago, and then it like literally threw me out out of the room. Let me try that. Occasionally, I get thrown out of rooms. I'm kidding. I don't. I would love that. Maybe in the past. How are you, Z? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It's good to finally um, meet you. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, you too. Being. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. When I've done this in the past, it's always been, um, you know, by myself. So it's it's cool hooking up and meeting new people. And when Andy asked me to, you know, come on and join in the fun, it sounded like a blast. So here I am. Hey, Andy. <laughs> I know Instagram is weird. I literally logged in. I was fine. And then boop, out the room. Anyway, <laughs> so how are, you? how are you feeling, Z? Good. Yesterday was really busy being Easter and all, so I'm enjoying yeah. the day today. Got yeah. Um, I've been there, so it was really fun for me. He um, ate his weight in Easter candy. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, it was <laughs> terrible. It was absolutely terrible. <laughs> By like 10 o'clock at night, he was like, I don't feel good, Mom. I'm like, I told you. <laughs> I told you. Hey, Ian. Uh, are you to be a child and on a sugar rush for always it's fun you know i actually have um grown children that are married and out of the house and i have a four-year-old yes i did that when my youngest daughter turned 18 i got pregnant with my son nice yeah about 16 it years actually eight. turned out perfect yeah because at first I was like, what? what? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, did that. I just finished all of that. I'm good. I'm going to start traveling and seeing stuff and doing things. And um, no. That's all right. It happens. There's about 16 years between me and the oldest brother. So. Curious? You're yeah. the second person in the last two days to tell me that. Yeah. Yes. It happens. Oh. <laughs> A lot of people. Hey girl, how are you, Robin? Good to see you. The sugar rush always results in the sugar crash. It does. <laughs> no, but it almost it almost um, ended up into sugar puke because uh, yeah, he ate his his weight in peeps. It was disgusting. <laughs> Pink and yeah. Peeps. Oh my god. They're like the most disgusting. Jersey. So good. Oh, what was that? You're delayed a smidge. I said, how was your Easter? Was it good? Oh, yeah. It was nice as nice as it could be, given the fact that we can't all, like, see each other and that other, and his kids came down from Marysville, which is about, like, an hour away or whatever. Yeah. And um, my parents did an Easter egg hunt for them in the yard, so oh. we got to see them through the window, and it was really nice. I did my Easter egg hunt in my living room. <laughs> oh, that's fun. I was so lazy. I was like, what? He's going to wake up, and I'm just going to hide Easter eggs around the living room. He'll never <laughs> see. He doesn't have siblings to know. It's like hide and seek. Exactly. And I was very creative. I even hid one, like, well, not in the fireplace, but pretty close. And he found it. So, yeah. So it was pretty cool. So, on... Um, this is the first time that we're ever really talking. I mean, mm -hmm. spoken a little bit on Messenger through, um, you know, the Jam Them Down site, which is what we're on now, but we really haven't spoken. And I read in your, um, sorry, my husband's getting a chat. I didn't like that. It's weird. Um, I read that you deal with some pretty hardcore stuff. So what's up with you? What's up with your... Um, your disability. Would you, do you want to tell me a little bit about that? Because I don't know okay. really. Sure. Um, so I was born with a type of muscular dystrophy, just addressing the elephant in the room. <laughs> okay. Uh, called FSHD, which stands for fascio-scapulohumeral dystrophy. Okay. Uh, 
and it's like one of the more rare types of muscular dystrophy that it's basically why it causes um, facial weakness and okay. upper arm weakness and like lower abdomen and leg weakness um, okay. which is why I can't smile and why my lips aren't moving right now even though I'm talking sure, <laughs> sure. Um, it's all good, all good. yeah so um, I was diagnosed when I was 18 months old okay and I'm 21 now, so it's been sort of like a lifelong thing that I just learned to adapt to and it changes my perspective and gives me a unique outlook on life. I, I can't, yeah, I, I can't imagine, well, I can't imagine in a way, but not physically myself, my husband, um, whom I've been married to for 25 years. I got married when I was 18. Um, born and raised in Virginia, and that's what we did then. But um, he got diagnosed with Parkinson's disease at 40 years old, and he's oh, older than me, and now he's 56. So he's been dealing with this for about 15 years. Mm. And it's crazy how, um, because you're talking about how you're starting to progress, and you know, you've as you've gotten older, you've learned to adapt and all of that. Um, mm. Basically, you know, that's what he had to do. And at first, you know, there's so much going on with Parkinson's, especially even then, 15 years ago, there was a ton going on because of Michael J. Fox and the Michael J. Fox Foundation and all of that. But he was on some great medications that were really helping him at first. So at the beginning of his um, illness, it was like not bad. But then as a neurological illness progresses, which they all do like that, um, you know, it got worse and it got worse and it started to affect his muscles because he has the kind where he gets the dystonia where you can't move and you're stuck and you're frozen. So he has a lot of issues with his muscles as well. And, and he was blessed enough and thank God we were lucky enough for him to get the DBS, the deep brain stimulation surgery about five years ago yeah because he had it when i was pregnant with my son my son's four he'll be five in april so um about five years ago and um it changed his life like it was crazy these stimulators go deep into the brain and they they hit the transmitters that um, help with movement and muscle and it was like he didn't have parkinson's for like two years it was amazing and then you have batteries almost like um pacemaker batteries for the heart that go into your chest one actually controls one side of the brain one controls the other side and um they run out of juice and you have to go get them replaced they're coming out now with ones you can recharge yourself thank god because it's a bitch to go in there and get them done all the time because he has to go under anesthesia and have actual surgery i mean it's serious um, but when you run down, like he starts to slow down and run down and all of that. So it is um, like a constant battle to see like, because we know when his batteries are running down because he starts to slow down and his muscle movements start to slow. So I'm sure you can imagine you having a, you know, muscular issue yourself, what that can be like. Because you feel like you are, and he's explained it to me. Um, like you're trapped, like you're trapped inside something that's kind of keeping you in like quicksand way. Yeah, um, I guess one thing that is the main thing that I deal with more so than the actual physical aspect of it is um, the mental toll that it takes on you. Oh, God. Um, and that's something that like a lot of people in the community don't really talk about. And no. I noticed that's mainly why I try not to get involved too much in the actual um, communities themselves because it is so easy to fall into that like desire for a pity party and as soon as you realize you're losing control over something or unless it was atrophying faster, there's that natural sort of desire to feel bad for yourself. Sure. And while it is important to mourn your losses and um, to honor that, yeah, uh, it's not really a healthy mindset to get into. 
No, it's not. But um, there is a time and a place for all of that too, because it's important for people like you and others that have these types of um, setbacks in their life um, to talk about it and get people aware and get them knowing that, you know, even though you do have this, you know, and I, you know, I don't know why, but I always have this thing in my mind where I hate to say it's a disability. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because we all go through shit in our life where we feel like we've been, and I know this probably sounds strange, but if you've gone through any type of trauma in your life, which, you know, I have in the past, you feel almost when you're going through those those times where you're down and you're out and you might be a little depressed or it's weighing heavily on you, you feel a little bit um, disabled in the mind. It's It can be a mental thing like being depressed and having anxiety. And, um, you know, I, I suffer from anxiety myself just because I ha I'm the the caregiver to my husband. I'm I'm I literally had to get um had to get um had to go in for training, and now I am legally his IHSS caregiver, which means like if he chokes or falls or anything like that, I can handle it. But can I handle it? Is the question. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. I've learned to use all the de-choking devices and I've learned to get strong and, you know, pick him up off the floor and help him do certain things if he falls. There's a lot of falling and things like that. It's really sad. But, um, you know, these are things that need to be talked about. They do. They absolutely do. Because there's a lot of writers out there who have issues that don't want to talk about it. And I've spoken to and made a lot of friends that actually have issues and they don't ever discuss it and then I become friends with them and then they tell me and I'm like what you never told me that yeah. you didn't tell me that you had any type of disability and like I said I hate saying that because I don't feel like um, you know like you're sharp as a tack and you write amazing and you're fucking awesome so you know using that word it just wanna I can understand that from both sides um I think there's a lot of power in reclaiming the term dis disabled. Yeah. The label of being, of calling yourself a disabled whatever, like I'm a disabled sure. or a disabled creator. Um, I would personally, I prefer the, the term disabled over differently abled or like um, whatever the other like, oh, I'm not disabled, I'm blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, I personally prefer calling myself disabled because well, see, that's I, I, that. I wouldn't know. Yeah, you're telling me that. Yeah, um, and I think that yes, it's not something that a lot of people talk about because there's the whole I want people to see me before they see the disability, which is for a long time why I refuse to talk about it. Um, and in school, I always wanted people to see my, um, my, sorry, my mind is like, Girl, <laughs> ironic. Are you, it's uh, not weird. I wanted people to see how smart I was and my ability to succeed in the classroom uh, besides my disability or inability to run around the track in so many minutes, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's partially why I didn't talk about it much in school. But I think as I grow older, I'm realizing that there is a, a place for it and it's empowering. <laughs> the more you talk about it, the less scary or foreign it is. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's why I, I talk about my husband's issues all the time and actually him and I laugh about it and we try and joke about it and you know some of it's not funny as a matter of fact one of my whips that I'm one of the several whips that I'm working you know on is is called Parkinson's not funny but the whole thing is all comedic about stupid shit that he's gone through and embarrassing moments and things that he's had to deal with um because it's not always fun and it's not always you know, and you have to make light of things sometimes, you know, life has to be made light of at times. 
and we have to um, try and lift each other up and make each other feel, you know, lighthearted. And and there's always, uh, I love how everybody's like chilling at the bottom, talking to each other. I think that's good. <laughs> it makes it more chill <laughs> when they're talking amongst themselves. <laughs> Like, they're not so focused on us, see? They're talking amongst themselves. <laughs> cool. Especially since we still, I haven't even started reading yet, but that's not our fault because we really didn't know each other, so we're getting to know <laughs> each other, and that's a cool thing. It's so fine. It's totally fine. It's all good. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that is important for us to, you know, do a good live, is for us to, like, chill and, and talk and, and get to know each other. And I'm yeah, glad definitely. we were able to... Um, have some uh, similarities with what's going on. I mean, my situation is different than yours, but we can totally relate, and I think that's super cool. Um, so I guess we'll get started and, and start reading some pieces. I, to be completely honest, since I'd never done this before with other people's pieces, I had said earlier, I was like, you know, I'm gonna wing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, it's cool. I'm a not I'm not bad at like a cold read. But um, you know, now that I've said I was gonna do it, I'm like, oh shit. What if I slub it up? You know, whatever. What it is. And I'm gonna try my best to the pieces that I am gonna read, I'm gonna really try my best to do them well. Okay guys, I'm really sorry if I screw it up. But I'm really gonna try and do it well. And I apologize if I don't in advance. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, bitches. All right, so would you like to go first or would you like me to start? It's totally up to you. Uh, I can go first. Okay, cool. Little thing that I want to get this um, username out of the out of the way because I can't turn on it for shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so all of these pieces I picked because I searched um, hashtag happy poetry because okay. I really wanted some lighthearted stuff to read. That's so these are all stuff that I found under the hashtag happy poetry, except for this one because I just really liked it. Um, this is at K goodness um K-T-O-U-D-I-L-Y-E-S-E-N-I-N-A Okay. Yeah. It's that one username that I can't pronounce. Dude, I can't pronounce half of anyone's names, most people's names, so please. See if I can put it in the chat real quick. They are a good writer. At K. K. Standby. <laughs> All good. That one. K T O U B I L Y S E N I N A. Okay. Yeah. So this one. one that she wrote for day three of Escape Roll. Gotcha. Oh, yes, Robin, please. That would be amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and this is for the prompt. Is anybody listening? It's a sticky, warm July night, and I'm invincible. A merciless hand with an iron grip rips out my vocal cords. God tries to silence me as I scream profanities in his shadowed face outside the Lutheran church. The crescent moon is glistening, hook pulling at the ink-stained static sky. My elbow is bruised and beaten, bloody by the cruel cobblestone giants, and I think myself a maverick. In reality, I'm only churning rust, rusty handles with my hand over their mouths as they whine, spinning out in a snow heaven parking lot, climbing a few feet off the, the ground and slipping on bark dust. This is my version of rebellion. I tumble down into the dirt, scratch my up my sorry, scratch up my dirt forearms and feel free. 
fresh flush cheeks, kissed by the sunlight's wet lips in a working body. Youth. Whew! That was awesome. That was... Okay, so I read this one and it just, like, hit me, like... There's something about... Um... Standing in a church parking lot and just... Feeling all of that, you know? Just... This is my rebellion, sort of. Like, I feel like maybe we've all been there at one point or another. I know I have. (laughs) So... I feel you. That was amazing. Great read. Great writer. Great piece. Yeah, it was really good. Awesome. Bye, all of you beautiful people. Hi, beautiful people. <laughs> <laughs> These people are awesome. Okay, so there was someone who DM'd me earlier because, like I said, I was going to do this free-for-all type thing and I got myself into it so now I gotta do it yep (laughs) who do you have I have where'd she go where'd she go one of my girls my my friends I am reading is raging poet and I'm gonna wait just a little bit to read her piece um but this other chick sent me this cool haiku and she had a really cool point to make when she sent it to me because a lot of people you know they read the haikus the small pieces and you know they're they're few words but a lot of times they're pretty punchy and they mean a lot especially to the writer and especially to some of the people that read it and she had a good point after she sent it to me saying that um you know, a lot of times it's all about our perception and what we get out of the piece and that these haikus are not getting um, a lot of the credit that they deserve because, um, or they need to get more credit is I guess how she was explaining it. But anyway, her name is haiku underscore and I cannot pronounce her last name. It's G E Z U N D H E I T. Haiku G E Z. I'm sorry. Haiku underscore G E Z U N D H E I T. And she moved to New York, but the daily subway rides never smell like grass. That's it. That's beautiful. Isn't that cool, though, when she said that? Because I got quite a few of them in here, and she sent me that, and she explained why. And I was like, I get that. She moved to New York, but the daily subway rides never smell like grass. (sighs) I used to love to go to New York. Now, that's viral shit that's going around. It's so sad seeing what's going on there. Um, it's hard to touch on subjects that are um, this painful and I was actually speaking to some people yesterday and talking about how collectively us as, as a people and as a as, as people of the world people of the planet all of us together collectively because I believe that they were all connected spiritually regardless of you know what your spirituality is um, we're all feeling this um what however you're feeling it whoever somebody else is feeling it, we're all feeling it this um this world's grieving and the pain of the world and we're all perceiving it in different ways and we're all feeling it in different ways and we're all writing different things but i was stating that there is this trend going where you know people cannot help it they just cannot help but talk about what's going on they can't And it's good because they're purging out, you know, and getting it out of their systems and and getting that pain out there and how they feel um, about what's going on because nothing has ever happened like this in our history. 
it's yeah. going to be in our history books and it's we're yeah. going to be raising some germaphobes i believe in the future <laughs> my four-year-old i have scared the shit out of him i'm like no don't get close to the groceries <laughs> i just got and it was like winning the lottery to get a costco to deliver groceries to me today oh my. los angeles california it's very hard to get <laughs> grocery delivery and he, it comes to my door and I have to get out the gloves, the mask, the disinfecting wipes, the sprays. And I'm like, don't get near the food until mommy's cleaned it. Yeah. Or she, so now he's like, can I touch that? And I'm like, no. Terrible. My sister-in-law brought over a basket of candy for me yesterday for Easter. And my dad's like disinfecting it. And I'm like, can I have the candy now? And he's like, no, it has to sit for two days. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Like candy. <laughs> no, your piece of chocolate must sit for two days. You can't yeah. eat two days. And you're like, but I really want that chocolate. I'm 21 and still learning patience. Girl, please. <laughs> I am 40 and still learning patience. <laughs> I think we are all learning patience right now. That is oh, the yeah. big, that's a big thing you just said right there. We are all learning to be more patient. All right, you, you're on next, girlfriend. You go for it. Okay. Um, see, I have... Oh, wait, did I... Oh, I, I read my haiku. Okay, now I'm going to go on to my next after you. Go for it. Okay, we have... Julia Ray Poetry. And this is also one that was written for... Um, Escape Girl. And this was day eight, hometown. Okay. We went for a walk today. 70 degrees and windy. I'd forgotten the sense of pollen, the feeling of sunlight on unshaven legs, and the sound of birds chirping, and still naked tree branches against a sky blue drop. Well, sorry. Against a sky blue backdrop. Two boys toss a football across the street back and forth to each other. A girl hangs a hand-painted sign on her porch. Stay safe, stay home. A father lays on a blanket in his yard, playing with a cooing, giggling, giggly baby. We're listening to a summer playlist on my phone, which I put in your back pocket because my son just doesn't have any, and we feel like a couple from the quirky young adult novel where teenagers speak like Shakespearean characters and convince themselves breaking into sea world is a good idea. We find a playground with a swing set, and before we know it, our legs are thrusting our bodies through the air. I haven't touched one of these in 10 years. I broke my arm jumping from one when I was 11, but now I'm not afraid anymore. How funny is it to take hours getting out of bed one morning and by that afternoon, to find yourself flying. Home by Julia Ray Poetry. That was amazing. Yeah. I loved how um, it's like just a little slice of life poem for you. Like, kind of hopeful in a way. Yeah. And like, throughout all of this chaos, there is still that little bit of normalcy, I guess. Yeah, I think that um, we're all trying to cling to more normalcy right now. If that even exists, like, what the hell is normal anyway? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I've always fought with that in my own psyche, in my own mind. Like, what the what is what is normal i don't believe that there is a normal that really exists i think that to each their own and um everybody finds their own normal do you know what i mean yeah because we're all different and um we all have shit that we deal with and things that we go through and <clears throat> people that we've dealt with in our lives that have hurt us and um we have to find our own normal. I believe that that's important <clears throat> because I don't believe that my normal is someone else's normal. Oh, for sure. It's like objective, so objective. Yeah. 
objective? So everyone is clinging to their own normalcy. It's like their own um, life, the lifeline right now, you know? They're just trying to cling to that and find that wherever they can. Yeah. Um, all right, well, I'm going to move on, and I am going to read one of my favorite writers. Her name is Raging Poet, and she is just awesome, and I think she's spunky as hell, and she's got a lot of great shit that she writes. Not shit pieces, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it like that. You know, I love you. Um, but she is funny, and she is spunky, and I love her pieces because she can write really lighthearted and funny and then she can go totally like hardcore and make you a like ball so i dig that but i found this piece of hers that i really loved and she said i could read it because i really like it a lot and i asked her she said it's cool so i'm gonna read it and this is again ragin r-a-g-i-n poet p-o-e-t ragin poet not raging, raging. What happens to a dream that can't cling to a head? Does it cry itself to sleep or sinks deeper in despair? What happens to a dream forgotten in a shelf? Does it tear apart its skin and explode into the air? What happens to a dream that fails to find a home? Does it linger in dream hell until the penance is done? What happens, if I must tell you, to dreams left unattended, they slowly become nightmares for brave minds to remember? Oh, I love yeah, that was good. That was such a good reading too. Hey, isn't she so cool? Yeah. She actually read this. I have to read one more piece from her after this because this is so funny, and I think that it will make a lot of people. Well, I thought it was funny, but I have yeah. humor people. <laughs> Occasionally, I laugh at shit I probably shouldn't, and I'm sorry. You know, my personality. <laughs> and people will say things sometimes, and they're and I think they're trying to be funny, and I get like the look, and I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am one of those people that try and find the humor and the good in everything because it makes me feel more comfortable about how I feel. Yeah. I try and hide behind humor sometimes so that I feel more comfortable in my own skin. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people do that. Yeah. Um, but, um, I definitely do that. Like, if I'm talking about a particularly dark subject with my therapist. I'll make jokes all the way through. Yeah. And I'm like, I think this is funny, it's hilarious. And she's like, no, you have the real problem. I'm like, that is so funny. And she's like, no, you need help. And I'm like, that's, okay. No. See, that's bullshit. You don't need <laughs> please. You're supposed to laugh about it. You have to. You've got to find the funny in it. You have to. You have to keep it. Yeah. And of course, there's times to be sad and mourn and feel upset and all of that. But we have to find that light and have that hope and have that funny. And um, I'm literally holding my phone, okay, guys, <laughs> tell you. Because I had this whole thing set up earlier. My daughter helped me do it. And I'm not even kidding you. Two minutes before, it, matter of fact, you asked me, are you ready? And it totally broke. So I'm holding my phone. That's all right. Y'all are on my iPad perched against some it's books. And a I've, uh, <laughs> I have, actually, I've got some neck issues. <laughs> my C3 and C4 is compressed, so shit goes numb on me, like, especially my arms occasionally. So I do uh, work. So for me, like, I'll keep switching arms because my left arm will go numb and then my right arm will start going numb because I'm compressed. And mm -hmm. I'm let them open my neck. They are not going to be putting any screws in my neck. No, thank you. Uh, no, yeah, that's what they want to do. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Not happening. I will keep getting fixed by the chiropractor. It's fine. I'll <laughs> <do> it. <laughs> I can't tell you how many tenders. 
in the Tokyo Laughter Funeral. Same though. Oh my gosh, I have gone to so many funerals in my lifetime. And it's always just really awkward because I find something that I'm like, I'm either really nervous or I find something that's really funny just randomly. And I just start laughing and like, oh, yeah, someone's dead here. Sorry. My, I have a really funny, well, I'm going to make this really fast because we have to keep reading these poems, but I have a hysterical, at least to me, it was hysterical. And it's terrible because I love, my mother was the most wonderful human being on the planet. I love her dearly. I miss her dearly. She died a while back. She died when she was 54. She smoked and she ate terribly. So, you know, she caused her illness and, um, but she passed away after a really long battle with lung cancer from Oof. lifestyle that she led. But at her funeral, my youngest daughter was three. Yeah, she was three or four. And my cousin, Jonathan, who is my mom's sister's son, my, my aunt Susie, we get to meet some of my family here. Um, he's reading my mother's eulogy because he's a deacon at his church back in Virginia. I was, by the way, I was born and raised in Williamsburg, Virginia. Um, that's where the funeral was. But anyway, in the middle of this eulogy, because my cousin is talking about all of this and God and God this and God that and God, 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 my daughter in the middle of the entire service stands up and says, and God bless America. <laughs> I wanted to crawl under the pew, but everyone, the entire congregation lost their shit. Everybody was rolling. And my Aww. mom would have loved it. She would have loved it. And God bless America. <laughs> and to this day, my daughter is 22 now. We still throw it in the face. They're like, oh, yeah. Oh. God bless America. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's what I did. So, anyway. All right. Your turn. Okay. I have to unlock my phone. Um, we have Cosmophile. I think they're actually in the room where they were at one point. They probably left because I can't. I talk a lot, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm very wordy. Oh. Very wordy. Apologize. It's just me. Yep. So, this is for another. It's Pedro Tones. Tito's been putting out really good poetry for this. I know. Um, Trump thingy. Oh, there they are. Okay, cool. So this is their escape throw day nine, natural light. Just really like this one. Remember when we tangle ourselves in string lights? How we'd curl them round our fingers, wrapped our arms like lost lines, giving life to abandonment. No one ever looked close enough to see a difference between us and the glowing constellations. So we held our ground, stood tall like confident lighthouses, learned the lessons from the lightning on how to crack the darkness of an endless storm. Do you remember how we led each other home, how we stripped our lights on the bedroom floor and felt the shadows flee our skin? I remember the fiery sun and the fierce realization that we were and always had been a natural light. I love that. Mm. So good. <laughs> I'm on reserve to write these for friends when they die too. People are fucking weird. You are <laughs> funny, girl. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I thought that was so funny. See? <laughs> That was an awesome piece you just read, by the way, but then that popped up right in front of my face. Oh, Jesus. Katie, you are hysterical. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, have mercy. That made me get all flushed. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. All right. So, I have a piece that I'm going to read by a friend. Her name is Michelle. She goes by... M-I-K-K-I -K -K Hendrix, H-E-N-D-R-I-X. So it's like Mikey Hendrix, but it's a double K. Hmm, cool. Yeah. 
she is an amazing writer and she's a cool chick and um i think this is a really cool piece that she wrote um join the easter parade put your best face on brush out the cobwebs in your hair prepare to serenade another new day the newspaper folded a death sentence on your coffee table the tragedy turned ornamental clear the debris of unknowing ripening like a cluster of speckled eggs in the sun lift the emotions stones that gather and weigh down around the throat entombed the balcony doors open front seats to watch clouds float by there's an easter parade every day so join in while we wait you and i longing to be risen That's that was really good. I like that. I thought that was a really cool piece. Yeah. I like her stuff a lot. She really thinks out of the box and she, um, she's super creative. She took a major hiatus for a while. She was going through some stuff, just like I think the whole planet does sometimes. Mm, yeah. The whole planet is going through stuff right now. So much stuff. Australia was on fire. Oh my God, see, <clears throat> this is something that um, I've had to do lately because I was doing it too often. I was watching the news. Ugh. Oof, cracking my neck feels so good. Um, but I noticed that it was really hurting me. So I stopped <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, there's anything going on in my area, our governor puts out this little thing and then it goes beep beep on my phone and then I'll read it. Cause it was really messing with me. So I'm like, you know, I didn't know what, what's what's happening in Australia right now. Oh, um, it was a few months ago. Oh, while. Yeah. <laughs> Clueless. The entire year has just been a massive clusterfuck so far. Oh my God. That's, no. Jesus Christ. We get fires in California all the time. It's absolutely horrific. Yes, we um, got some of the ash from one of the fires in California like last summer, I think. Oh my it was so thick up here. Yeah. Um, crazy. There was a fire. Um, I can't remember how uh, far away it was just a good 15 20 miles maybe but we were literally getting ash in our air and i was out front on my porch and i'm like why is it so dingy and gray and what is this shit in the air and it started to smell and i'm like what's going on because they hadn't said anything on the news they hadn't said a word and then i go on and i saw that there was a fire but the strangest craziest thing ever is going on right now in california um in my area specifically which we've had a drought here forever there's never rain it does not rain and it is hot as hades in the summertime it actually starts to get hot usually around this time of year around easter april april may um starts to get really hot in california and um it has been freezing cold and raining every day for weeks man what? What is this? Like, what, what planet are we on right now? Like, I don't get this. But the beauty of that is the fact that our air is used to be the most horrendous. Like, they say if you're out on the highway, don't leave your windows down. It's basically like you're smoking cigarettes. Might as well be smoking. Mm -hmm. Might as well be smoking, which I used to do years ago and I quit. Um, but the air is at its cleanest right now. It's like peak clean around the globe. California, right? I'm shocked. I'm shocked. And it's all because of the rain and the wind and the, the weather. Chilly yeah. and rainy and windy. Thing. And it, it's like a cleansing. Yay. Much needed. It was so needed. So needed because I have such allergies when it comes to um, nothing really like food based or anything like that. When I go outside and um, I breathe this shit air, I'm like, you don't go out in it. So now I'm like, every chance I get, 
with a mask on. Oh, yeah. We have to wear a mask to breathe our clean air. But <laughs> it's clean. Yeah. But anyway. Um, I was going to read one of my favorite poets on the planet. Mm -hmm. His name is Mike Dennis, and he is the Sonic King. Ooh. Yeah, and I am terrified to read his pieces, actually, because they're so fucking intense. Excuse my... <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Didn't mean to say that. Mention <laughs> your piece. <sighs> Because you have to be in the zone to read these. Mm, yeah. They're very difficult to read. So I'm really afraid to read this. But I'm going to read it anyways. Try and get my, like, on it mode. Because when I read his stuff, to be completely honest, I sometimes have to read it, like, five, six times. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just to get the gist of everything he's trying to say. And I'm like, <laughs> what? Okay, again. What did you say? So we'll see what happens. I'm so sorry, Mike, if I, if I like, dissect this and, like, mess it up and screw it up. Because, you know, I love you to pieces. It's all good. Sunshine beams, golden, soft and clean. Her frail, warmth fingers in wandering splendors pierce. Early morn's tranquil scene o'er dell and dales, mystical homes. Eternal daylight dreams verse. Such beauty, radiant yet so fleeting, shone eternal from the slumbering sky. Restless dreams, my sleepless brain, heart beating. Tender light calming my impassioned eyes. For March's cold hand withdrawn in breeze warm, as bloom and bird herald April weather. The gals dim flakes of cloud together form till such showers fall upon us nether. As the phoenix, flesh life, so born from strife, deep perfection were, but dark death in life. That's beautiful. I know. And every single piece he writes is this intense, and this amazing. Hi, Mike. I love you, and I love your pieces, and you know that. <laughs> I hope I read it okay, Mike. I'm sorry if I didn't. I really try. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sorry. Anyone who reads Mike's piece, I did it beautifully. Yay! Woo! For me! Um, I'll have a sip of tea, because you said I read it beautifully. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Oh, I feel so proud of myself. Oh, yes, thank you. I am chugging tea. I'm actually drinking this really awesome tea by, um, it's called Refresh. And it literally has every herb and everything that you need in it to, like, breathe and stay healthy. Because I'm a bit of a freak when it comes to all of this bad juju and... Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I'm drinking, like... <laughs> I'm taking every herb and every tea and every everything I can get my hands on. <laughs> Kids all this crap and they're like, eh, we don't want to take this, mom. And if you have, do it anyway. They'll be like, do you like, yeah. do you like TZ? I love tea. Oh yeah, girl, I'm doing the tea thing. Yeah. What's your favorite beverage? Oh, goodness. Um, be honest. Hard question. <laughs> uh, I like tea. I love black tea. Um, lavender black tea is weirdly amazing. So amazing. Yeah. Um, lavender. I really yeah. love the pepper. My absolute favorite is matcha green tea. And I have been telling everybody this for like every time I get on, and I'm like, okay. I feel like it's my duty to the plant to tell everyone that will listen to me about matcha green tea because in each cup it's like drinking 12 cups of regular green tea and um yes, gracious. low antioxidants that's a beautiful thing that is a lot of oh, it's love. Mike's so sweet he's a sweetheart um mm -hmm. okay 
Who did I have next on? Uh, you're, you're next. You're next. Go. I have like three more to read. I think. Yep. Okay. So I have eating, eating dot poetry. And Falcon poem. Yay! Yes. Los Angeles, six forty-eight a.m. My neighbor's disco heartbeat, the pattering rain, the humming kitchen, the man in the tights with a drum, the smell of coffee brewing, a dog howling somewhere, another dog's eager response, you, warning my bed, today I'm grateful. The muses woke me before the sun, and now that she's up too, her silvery light peeks through my window and cloaks me with delight. Most of the city is still sleeping, or just rising. This is her morning song. Ah. The caption says, Beauty of waking at dawn. Doesn't happen that often to me, so when it does, I feel exceedingly grateful. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I love that. I love that. That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. Grateful, man. I tell you what, the more and more people I talk to lately, they have been so grateful of what they have. And it's funny because I live in Los Angeles and there are so many um, like celebrities that live around me and I freaking run into them at the grocery store, which is really strange. But I've never been like, I know this sounds really weird. Maybe I hope I'm not the. I know. I know. I, I know for a fact that I cannot be the only person that feels this way. But I am not starstruck. I have never been in my life. Mm. <laughs> like I will meet somebody that I've seen on TV, and I think it was because my daughter. We moved to California from um, our hometown when she was 11 because she was um, in the industry for a little while in the music industry. And that was the thing for like years for her, but we took her out of it when she was 14 because it was just too much. The industry for children is not a good idea. To any parent out there that is listening to me now, this is if there's any advice that you will take from me, if you are thinking of put, putting your children in the industry at, at a young age, think twice, think thrice, think a lot, don't do it. <laughs> Wait until they are old enough to choose for themselves or wait until they are at least um, mature enough to choose for themselves because um, my my daughter went through it, man. And um, I'm not allowed, I'm actually, she went through so much that I'm not allowed to talk about it. Yeah. Oh man. Five and married and she actually moved back to our hometown in Virginia and she's so happy and like, she's got like 10 fur babies and her her husband and their family's amazing and live on this big farm and she's happy as clam. So, I mean, there you go. But she teaches music. It's it's just, you know, what she loves. Um, yeah. Back, because I, my brain will do that. Like, I'll flip back and forth to any parents out there thinking of getting their children involved in the industry at a young age. Don't do it. That's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. All right. Have a good life, Robin, hopefully. She a lot of her youth because um, of that, and I blamed myself for many, 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 many years, and I made myself sick over it. I got really depressed. I had to get out of that, and I was speaking to a therapist and all kinds. Um, of, I blamed myself, and that's terrible because you see that you have literally caused your child to have trauma. And I always swore because of the trauma I went through, which was a completely different situation that I would never let my children go through the shit that I went through. You know, have a very stable and supportive home life. And I we tried to do that for our kids, be very supportive in their, you know, ventures and what they loved and what they were into. And we did that for them. But in the, when you get deep and you get into things like this, like the industry and all of that, you have no control anymore. You lose that control if you're a parent, unless you are literally on top of it 24 7 and i have other children you know so yeah. not be there 24 7 and that was not a good thing like i should have literally been on top of it and been more involved but i couldn't and it was it's not even there anyway because it all 
worked out and everything happens for a reason and she's so much better off thank god um but anyway i am going to read someone who sent me this through my dm and she's a wonderful writer my god and i've never heard of her before and i love that when um you know these new writers come to me and they're like will you tell me what you think and i read their stuff and i'm like oh, why are also, you asking me what i think <laughs> who just wrote this piece that just blew my shit out of the water well, yeah i i read it and i'm like damn you're amazing so um this is someone called smiling through high also, hey, real quick, we have about two and a half minutes left. Oh. Um, so, um, after you read this, we can restart for like another like 20 minutes or so. It'll take to finish the rest. I don't of run into um, Robin's life, which starts at, uh, what time does her start? Oh, shit. Oh, really soon. Yeah. Maybe we should just stop after this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But again, it's soon. Cause yeah. All right, let me read this really quick. It's called Smiling Through High. I don't want to run into Robin's um, life. Yeah. And I got to watch it. And she's awesome. And she's part of this community, so it's cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so it's called Smiling Through High. S-M-I-I, -I, I'm sorry, S-M-I-L-I-N-G through high with two eyes. I cast a line in my mind's eye to days of youth long since gone by, to a birthday party, living room, buffet trays, and stale perfume. With the wallpaper wearing fancy dress, clinging to the 80s with worn out threads, in the center of the room there was a worn orange chair. I stayed in the peripheral frame like a door hinge avoiding stairs. In the chair there was an old woman that I hadn't seen for years. She asked for a drink and it was my mom who volunteers me for the role and so I got her a glass of water. When I returned she said to me, is it your mom Joe's daughter? I told her she was white and reminded her of my name. It's a shame, at her prime, she was as sharp as a tack. The time had waned on her, memory she, was, and her memory was showing cracks. We talked for a little while and she was in a good form. She made the room seem brighter and the chair less worn. I thanked her for the die-cast cars I had found in the attic. She had got them for my birth. I figured there was no time like the present to make use of it for all it was worth. We joked and laughed. Soon she asked for another water. Where I returned, she said to me, isn't your mom Joe's daughter? That was good. Oh, I loved that. And it's sad. Yeah. Because it shows, you know, what happens to a lot of us as we... Ladies and gentlemen, this is Andy Morales, Jam Them Down. And thank you for tuning in to the Jandam Sessions live podcast. Unfortunately, they weren't able to finish reading the poets considering the fact that the time had run out. But we thank you for joining us and we will see you on the next episode.